Hi, my name is Wei Vota, and I moderate the Educational Technology Debate, a monthly look at the information and communication technologies that could be appropriate for the educational systems of the developing world. It's an initiative of the World Bank and UNESCO. And each month we have learned people in technology and education debating whether the newest or the coolest or even just the oldest technologies are really the best to increase educational outcomes. This month, we've been taking a look at tablets. From the iPad to the Kindle to the Nook, how can these slate-like form factors really improve educational outcomes? Is it a paradigm shift from the use of computers or laptops or radio, or is it just the next new fad? I know that you all there are very excited about the use of the iPad in Australia. I can't blame you, it's really a cool device. I own one myself. But is this really appropriate for the schools in the developing world? Let's take a look at that and how the iPad or other devices could really have an impact. Now this is what I mean by the developing world. This is Lagos, Nigeria. And as you can see, there's a great juxtaposition between the extreme wealth and extreme poverty of the country. You have first world economic and social activity right next to subsistence farmers. The men in the foreground are literally living off the land. And this isn't common, sorry, this isn't uncommon to see this and situations like this across all of the developing world, from Africa to India to Southeast Asia. Great wealth next to great poverty. And when we talk about schools in the developing world, this is generally what people assume. The school under a tree, where you have a very, very basic situation of an older person, not a trained teacher, who is educating the youth in the social and mores of the culture. Now this is a very basic school, and this isn't necessarily where we think of putting an iPad experience or a tablet experience. This is your very start school. What we're really talking about is schools that look like this. These schools have an infrastructure. They have buildings, they have teachers, they have a sense of order and progress and process that makes them an actual educational institution. At the same time, there are things that they're lacking. A schoolroom like this does not usually have electricity. In fact, uh, it has a great dearth of experience using any kind of electronic device outside of maybe the mobile phone. And definitely a lack of understanding of how to use an electronic device in education. At the same time, the ability to use an iPad or any high-end technology would be lacking at every level from the student to the teacher to the administrators. Or to put it another way, there's no genius bar in Chad or in Niger. There in fact is only a few places where you have authorized Apple resellers in the entire continent of Africa. So while there's a willingness and there's desire, there is a bit of a lack of infrastructure. But let's step back and take a look at the opportunity of the iPad. We really have this paradigm shift where we can move away from physical books and, if you will, hard to access technology like a laptop where you need training to the iPad. The iPad's easy, it's intuitive. I've given it to my one and a half year old daughter and she used it natively from the very get go. So it's a very easy device and there's great excitement around the device and I for one really feel that the tablet is a form factor that is going to change the way we interact with technology, especially a touch screen form factor with as easy use as the iPad. At the same time, we have a few stumbling blocks. First, content. Now, I don't know how many apps there are in the Apple I, uh, App Store. I don't know how many apps there are in the Android Store. I really don't care. Because no matter how many apps are there, there's one small problem with all of them. They're not written for the developing world. They're all in English. They all expect a very high degree of user knowledge, a very high degree of internet connectivity. And this isn't necessarily what's happening or what's available in the developing world. And very crucially, and I think the most important point here is content in the language appropriate to the learner. Let's think about that for a minute. There are 8 million people who speak Hosa as their first language. In fact, that's 20% of South Africa, the most advanced country in Sub-Saharan Africa. And yet, the Wikipedia has only 118 articles. 118 articles for all 8 million Hosa speakers. And this is actually played out through almost every language group that is not English, French, 
Spanish, German, Portuguese. If it's not one of the major Amero Europe language groups, it just does not register in the sense of content. It's not there. So we have a real issue around languages and around the lack of content that's in the language appropriate to the learner. There are people working on this. There are open content and open um, creative content groups that are trying to work on developing content that is appropriate to learners and it is free to use in the, and to translate into local languages. And there's a decent amount of translation happening at the local language level. And also, as you might expect, the world is moving towards the major dominant languages. There are now more and more people who think of English as the language that they want to learn versus their own native language. So content is an issue today, and it will be an issue tomorrow, but over time it may not be the greatest issue that we face in trying to get a tool like the iPad adopted across the developing world. There is one issue, one challenge, that is only growing larger. And that is the teacher. In the sense that there are millions of teachers across the developing world, very few of them have the understanding of ICT. And even fewer of those have an understanding of how to use tools like the iPad in the classroom as an educational device, as a way to increase educational outcomes. Oftentimes, if there is technology in a classroom, it's used to teach how to use the technology versus how to do math or English or science that just happens to use ICT in, it, in the process. So what we have here is a major problem with teachers. First, they don't necessarily know how to use the technology. And second, oftentimes, teachers are just outright scared of it. Here, teachers are looking at the XO laptop, the laptop from one laptop per child, which is pretty simple to use. And yet, still, as you can see, people are trying to look at it, figure out what is it. They're concerned. They don't really know how to use it. And in their day, with all the other tasks and requirements that are put on them to educate, and at the same time, the very low pay they have to actually feel that they're doing a good job, it's hard to get them excited about using a new technology that they may not be comfortable with. At the same time, teachers in the developing world are not necessarily teaching in project-based learning or constructionist or even Montessori. Most of the education in the developing world is actually chalk and talk, as in where the teacher tells the students something, they repeat it. It's often written on the chalkboard for the child to write down and respond to, hence chalk and talk. But you're all familiar with that. The real paradigm shift that we want teachers to get to is to have a more of a child or learner-centric educational method. And with every passing day, there are more teachers that are entering the educational system that do not have this knowledge and do not have ICT skills, and therefore are not necessarily going to be on this leading paradigm to get people excited about using technology. And if you insert technology into a situation where the teachers are not comfortable and not incentivized to use it, you have failure. As in OLPC in Peru, they distributed over 400,000 laptops across the country. And they did not follow up with in-depth teacher training on an in-service as well as a pre-service basis. And they found that over time, there was actually a decreased use of computers in the classroom that over time what happened and what's happened in many situations around the world is that the computers are put in a closet and put away and forgotten about because they're not integrated into the learning aspect. So how do we get people, the teachers of the developing world, to look like this? Excited educators who understand and know how to use technology and are smiling and happy that they've gotten iPads and can use iPads to increase the educational outcome of children. That's a really good question, and I hope you'll join me both in the conference that's ongoing today and in the educational technology debate to think about how we can do that, how we can transform the introduction of technology like tablets, like the iPad or the Kindle or even the Nook, into the educational systems of the developing world and actually increase educational outcomes, have students, have teachers, have a community that's empowered by the technology that gets there. It's an open question. There is no exact right answer. Though I think we can find the right answers if we work together and look through it. So enjoy your conference. Enjoy the excitement and hype that you feel about the iPad in Australia. And then think to yourself, now how is this technology, how am I using it here in Australia, 
that can actually leapfrog and be used in a rural school like the one here in Ghana? That's the question I leave with you, and I hope you'll join me in trying to figure it out on the educational technology debate. Thank you.